turn to a New York courtroom for his $250 million civil fraud trial. On Tuesday, his former attorney, Michael Cohen, will be there to testify against his former boss. The face-off comes after the judge presiding over that trial fined Trump $5,000 for a, quote, blatant violation of a gag order, warning that any future violations could hold harsher punishments, including jail time. Joining me now, Charles Coleman, Jr., MSNBC legal analyst, civil rights attorney, former Brooklyn prosecutor, and host of the Charles Coleman podcast. Charles, oh, one, thanks for being here, too. I don't think I've ever not seen you in a suit. <laughs> Just put that out there. But we've got, we got to talk about some serious stuff. About that gag order violation, um, how serious is the judge... Um, to the judge's threat to jail Trump if he violates um, the gag order again. He's already fined him $5,000. Well, Jonathan, I do think that the judge is very serious about future penalties should Donald Trump continue to push the envelope with respect to the gag order. I think that the $5,000 fine itself was symbolic, but it's important symbolism because this is the first time that we've had the question answered, what happens if Donald Trump continues to do what he's been doing the entire time, which is basically ignore previous warnings from the bench, from various judges in various cases about his online activity attacking different court officials. And so it's important to understand that even though the $5,000 may not seem like much, what the judge is doing is he's setting the stage to move forward with additional penalties if Donald Trump does not comply. Now, Tuesday is the courtroom showdown between Michael Cohen and, and Donald Trump. Uh, what will you be watching for? Well, we know what Michael Cohen is going to say because Michael Cohen has not been particularly bashful about talking <laughs> in the news. I don't necessarily expect that Donald Trump is going to have much of a reaction within the courtroom, given everything that we've seen. But... I am going to be watching for, given what we were just talking about, any sort of comments that Donald Trump decides to make on social media about Michael Cohen as a witness in this case, because that is something that is going to provide a lot of insight as to the judge's willingness to back up what he has previously said about Donald Trump violating future orders. It's also going to be very telling as it relates to Donald Trump's other orders in D.C. As you know, Judge Chuckton put a hold on her decision to issue a gag order in the case in D.C. But actions like this only give further fuel to the argument that Donald Trump has to have a gag order on him as a defendant in these cases. Otherwise, he will abuse his platform. So that's the biggest thing that I'm going to be watching for. Substantively, I don't expect many surprises from Michael Cohen. Let's turn your attention to Georgia and the Georgia election interference case, where two of Trump's former attorneys, Kenneth Chesbro and Sidney Powell, they both pled guilty to related charges and agreed to testify against other defendants. If you were Donald Trump, how scared would you be right now? Absolutely. This is not a good sign for Donald Trump as a defendant. And I think that people have to recall, these are people who have not ever been in these situations, meaning you have 19 people, most of whom, if not all, have never been arrested before. They have never faced this type of pressure in terms of a prosecution. What that means is that it's going to result ultimately in a lot of throwing people under the bus in order to CYA. And that's what we're seeing happening. We're going to see these pleas continue to take place, although... I suspect that the, that the bargains that Fannie Willis's office are going to be willing to make are not going to be as great as you go forward because there's less incentive. So what I expect is a barrage of uh, uh, plea, plea deals to be made within the next few weeks by additional defendants. And if I'm Donald Trump, this is gravely concerning. So this is one case that I've always said that Donald Trump has to have at the top of his radar. And now we're seeing why, because Fannie Willis has the ability with this RICO case to bring in more and more defendants that have more information about him, flip them, and then create a stronger case against the former, former president. Only two questions, and you covered the world there, Charles. Charles Coleman, Jr., as always, thank you very much for bringing your expertise to The Sunday Show. Thanks, Jonathan.